Good morning, everybody. My name is Sergio Jimenez. I'm presenting my doctoral dissertation proposal uh, named uh, Soft Cardinality, a set based approach for similarity assessment and anti tier resolution, uh, under the guidance of Professor Alexander Kalbuk. Uh, this is the outline. Uh, we will share, see today some background, the description of the problem, the main objectives, and the methodology. Well, what is uh, similarity assessing? Similarity assessing is to establish a degree of resemblance between two objects, which is a human uh, characteristic uh, that we share with some animals but it is uh, very important in the development of intelligent systems. Uh, similarity uh, can be see, can be seen as uh, can be seen as a as a function, uh, a function with two parameters in the static case. Uh, let's say the two objects, and, and that function should return a number between zero and one, and, and uh, where zero means the, le the lowest level of possible similarity, and one the highest uh, level of similarity. Uh, also, uh, there is adaptive approaches where there is an, an additional parameter to that function, which is the corpus, which uh, which means the entire set of uh, corpuses uh, of uh, objects that are included uh, in the whole comparison of objects. Uh, also, <coughs> we can add um, a theoretically an arbitrary number of parameters and use any information that you want, like the context, language, phonetics, semantics, domain knowledge, etc., to build those kind of functions. In our case, uh, A and B, the objects that we, we are being compared, uh, are text, and it, uh, that could be names, uh, records in a database, objects represented in XML, or, or, or um, databases of citations. Well, there's another concept that is entity resolution. Entity resolution is to decide if two objects representations refer to a same entity or not. Two uh, images of Marilyn Monroe, uh, two images that refers to uh, Marilyn Monroe. Okay, uh, there are some examples in, in the te cases of text where there is an initial image here. A Gal book is Alexander Gal book. Uh, Fabio Gonzalez is Fabio Gonzalez with a misspelling. Um, um, harder coreference cases, misspellings, abbreviations, etc. Well, how can you use uh, similarity to, to address the entity resolution problem? Uh, um, let's look at this example. Um, for instance, you have a set of uh, points uh, general, um, a set of uh, objects uh, green, green, and some, um, it is possible that uh, some play objects uh, from the set A uh, uh, could be the same of, of the set B, but we don't know. So we are using similarity to establish that. And so we use a similarity function to get a, a similarity value uh, among all the possible combinations, and we got those numbers. And after the, that, all possible combinations are sorted by the level of similarity, and the most common the natural idea is to think that the, the pairs with the higher similarity are candidates to be the same, uh, the same, even, uh, the same object or same entity. So we establish a threshold and, we and say that, uh, and say that uh, above that threshold, uh, threshold we are uh, deciding that they are the same objects, and below that threshold that they are not. Um, but how we uh, know whether we are the, doing the job well? Uh, usually, those the data sets are. Uh, has also a gold standard. A gold standard is the ground truth which establish which pairs are the real coreference. In this case, uh, we have an, uh, uh, just uh, two pairs of uh, real coreference, A1 and B2, and A3 and B1. So let's see how this strategy, strategy works. Uh, in that case, uh, it works for the first pair with a red outlay shape. Um, very, very well, they found this this case, and for the B case, also they found, um, and the rest, they're not uh, the true pairs, 
so it worked perfectly. But in many cases, you have similarity function. Now we change the numbers with the uh, with the color, but also with the numbers. So the order will also change. And uh, if it, uh, now I would check the gold standard, the both reds, both blues. Now they are separated with this other case, which. Uh, uh, GNA is a false positive and also false negative, and there's no possible threshold that solves the problem entirely. This is the main problem cost. Well, what we are trying to, what is the knowledge gap, gap that we're trying to address? <coughs> we use, we have an output to use similarity to solve entity resolution via thresholding or clustering and other strategies. But it happens that, like the uh, ping one function, uh, similarity doesn't work very well, and it makes that the anti terror solution go uh, with problems too. So basically, by the uh, garbage in, garbage out uh, principle, if your similarity function has uh, doesn't order the pings in the in the, uh, in the in a minimum meaningful way, uh, the anti terror solution problem will be solved only partially. Uh, what, what, which is the the the, the actual um, approach to solve that problem? Make some pro the post processing, use the transitive closure, matching rules, heuristics, any kind of thing that try to to repay that uh, entity resolution part. But in uh, our, our 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 way to to that we are proposing, it's okay. But if you have a, per, a very good similarity function, you don't have to do all, all those kind of things. And we notice that most of the similarity functions that fail in uh, text applications uh, fails because they doesn't have an account the human factors. So we're working here adding human factors to the similarity functions. Well, let's see a uh, fast a uh, literature review of a same, complete century, the 20th century of the tax similarity. Uh, we, we can start with the jacquard coefficient at the beginning of the century, which is um, basically the cardinal, uh, a ratio of the cardinality of the intersection divided by the cardinality of the union of a pair of sets. Uh, Soundex, which uh, I think uh, takes into account phonetics to, to compare names, uh, at the distance, the minimal number of uh, the operation between two strings, X strings, uh, TFIDF, uh, which is, I think, the most remarkable uh, um, um, similarity function here, which established the vector space model, where we, that it's very useful and common uh, with a ha very high impact in text applications. Uh, the Jaro uh, distance, which uh, was an um, uh, optimistic version of the, the distance. Uh, the Jaro Winkler, which has to uh, into account um, a human factor, which said uh, that uh, when we are comparing, for instance, names, we uh, people uh, usually make mistake only in the last character, not in the beginning. Uh, a typical example is the name Britney Spears. Everybody know that uh, Britney uh, starts with a B, with an R, with an I, but the rest of characters it's, are very difficult to. They are very er error prone. Um, Q rams uh, comparing the strings using substrings. Manga, uh, the Manga Alkan method, which uh, uses uh, that, that's a hybrid method that compare words and uses an additional function like uh, the distance, edit distance to compare words between them. Uh, and there is uh, that one was important that um, they can link propose a theoretical uh, information theoretical uh, definition of similarity, which uh, compare uh, any kind of object. Based on the inform and the amount of inform information used uh, by each one of the objects, um, and they learn learn the distance, which is an adapted version of the, the distance. They make the difference in the colors. The, the, the those that are in, in that color are the adaptive approaches. Okay, the last decade it starts um, basically with adaptive approaches. Uh, and Belenko proposes an improved version of the learned the distance. Um, uh, William Cohen proposes uh, 
substantive version of the uh, cosine uh, TFIDA uh, of the vector space model. Uh, Fuzzy must match the similarity, uh, it, which is a substantive version of the distance. Uh, compressed distance, which use uh, is a, basically an implementation of the ideas of deck and link. Um, Google similarity, which is in other color because it's, I think it's one of the cases of the open challenge uh, similarity metrics because they use the entire wave to assess similarity between words, between text. Uh, <coughs> Meta Levenstein, which is an Substance version of the distance, but using ideas from William Cohen and fixing some problems in sub TFIDF. Mm, uh, Monge Alkin generalized, Monge Alkin proposed by, by us, uh, which is a generous, generalized version and improved version of the Monge Alkin method. And finally, the sub no, not finally, the sub cardinality proposed by us the, 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 last year. And uh, the CXIDF, uh, which is uh, an improved version made by the same uh, William Cohen, uh, uh, using some contact information to compute those IDF weights. Okay, why we are interested in the topic? Well, we are looking similarity to make entity resolution, uh, particularly in matching to perform information extraction, to make object consolidation, to make product normalization. Let's try to figure out if the description of two pro technology products, for instance, are the same or not. Um, why we're doing that? Because we're trying to balance the research problem uh, we aim and a practical problem. Uh, and we try to provide a high impact working in that part uh, to provide a uh, uh, high impact to the academic community. And <clears throat> we're working also on that problem at the very end to give uh, a high impact to our sponsor, which is called Sciences. Well, uh, let's pass to the step to the problem. Uh, this is uh, Amos Tversky, which, which was a mathematical psychologist. Uh, who wrote that paper, Features of Similarity, in 1977. He died in 1996 uh, 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 from cancer, and sadly he lost the opportunity to, won the, to receive the, prize, the Nobel Prize, who were received by his colleagues. Wow.